Nothing is allowed to me. Are we with this truck now so it doesn't get all sweaty? The question again. All right. Patricia, you, you would consider yourself to be a good person. Okay. Let me ask you a few questions and see if that's true, all right? Have you ever told a lie? Yes. If you tell a lie, what does that make you true? No, well, no, more so than that. Liar. Liar. There you go. So you're not a good person. Hey. I'm on the box. You learn from mistakes. Come on, you gotta lie. Patricia, have you ever stolen anything? I don't care how small it is. Yeah, but it was in an accident. You you stole something on accident. I tried on a ring. Okay, forget the ring. A piece of candy. An answer on a test. Yes. Yes. If you steal something, what does that make you? A no, they're in Pittsburgh, a actually. A thief. Yeah, a thief. Okay. All right, how about, how about this one? Have you ever used God's name in vain? You said a curse word. That's called blasphemy. Very serious thing. Wait. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay. How, how, how old are you? Fifteen. All right, I won't ask you that one. Um, let, me ask, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this one. Have you ever wanted something that doesn't belong to you? Yeah. The Bible calls that covet. It's actually one of the Ten Commandments. And you know, what, I, what I've just done is I've asked you four of the Ten Commandments. God's perfect standard for living. Now, if you were to die tonight, and of course, Patricia, I don't know if that happens to you. I do not big. If you were to die tonight and stand before God, He would see you as a lying, thieving, blasphemous, Covenant at heart. Now, does that sound like a good person to you? Now, if you were to stand before God on the day of judgment, and that's the way he saw you, based on your own admission, do you think he'd find you innocent or guilty of breaking his law? Do you think do you think you would go to heaven or hell? Yeah. Does that concern you? Does that concern you? Yeah. Do you know what God did for you? So that you would not have to face judgment and face eternity in hell. Sacrifice his own son. But you're probably too young to have been in court ever in your life, right? At least I hope. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 I'm 42, I don't have a million bucks now. And you look at the judge and say, wait, judge, I promise I'll never do it again. And the judge says, but Patricia, you have broken the law, I have to hold you accountable. It's a million dollar fine or life in prison. Now he's just about to take you away to spend the rest of your life in prison and someone walks in the courtroom, someone you've never met, walks up to the judge's bench, puts a million dollars on the judge's bench, looks at you and says, your honor, I love Patricia, I'm going to pay her fine, let her go. The judge looks at the, you're still guilty, you still committed the crime, you're still worthy of punishment, but the judge sees that your fine has been paid in full. He looks at the fine, he looks at the money, he looks at you and he says, Patricia, you're free to go. Would that be good news to you? Yeah, but? Right, and that's the beauty of the story. Even though you're guilty of stealing something, Someone else came in and paid your fine so that you could go free. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what God did for you. God came down to the person of Jesus Christ, perfectly sinless in every way, God in the flesh, came down to earth, died a horrible death on the cross to pay the penalty for your crime, for everything, for every lie you've ever told, everything you've ever stolen, every time you've ever wanted something that didn't belong to you, every time you disobeyed your parents, every time you've gotten in vain, all the all crimes that are punishable by death in God's economy, and that you can't pay the price for. Hang on, hang on, we're not we're, we're not done. Jesus came down and he paid the full price for your sins by dying on the cross. He shed his blood. God requires payment in blood for your sins. And it's either going to be yours, or you're going to repent and turn from your sins and put your trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. Now, when I asked you what God did, you said Jesus Christ came down and, and, and he gave his son. It's not enough just to believe in our head. We actually have to believe in our heart to the point where we're turning away from our sins, turning from lying and stealing and coveting and blaspheming and disobeying our parents 
and turning and putting our trust in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. Does that make sense to you? I, have you ever heard that before? Put it that way? I don't believe that. But when you walked up here this evening, were you thinking that if you were to die today, you would go to hell? So my question for you now is, what are you going to do about it? Uh, you can try as hard as you want, and you'll never get there. Repent! I lived, I lived half of my life trying as hard as I could to get close to God, and I couldn't. Why? Because I was a believing in the God of my own imagination. A God that would do whatever I wanted him to do, would forgive me, just like say, hey, forgive me. If a murderer stands before a judge, and the judge says you're guilty, and the murderer says, yeah, I know, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have killed that person, but I promise never to do it again, let me go. Would he be a good judge if he let that murderer go? And you know the Bible says that if, that if you hate anybody, that you harbor anger, bitterness, and hatred in your heart, that you're actually a murderer in God's house? God can't just let people go because, he, uh, because people say, hey, I'm never going to do it again, let me go. What if you're really sorry, though? You, the same thing, if, if, the, if the murderer stood before the judge and said, I'm really sorry. But what if like, you're really sorry in your heart? It doesn't matter, you're still guilty of the crime. So you're just not supposed to take any risk in your life? Well, you're not supposed to sin, but none of us are capable of that. That's the point. No matter how hard we try, we're never going to pass a good person test. None of us are ever going to be good enough to earn our way to heaven. That's the beauty of what Jesus did. I'm sorry? By repenting, by turning from their sins and putting their trust in Jesus Christ alone for their salvation, by not trusting in their own goodness, because you're never going to make it. I'm never going to make it. I can never do enough good to outweigh all the bad I've done. If, if you sin just once a day, that's 365 times in a year that you've broken God's law. If a criminal goes to a courtroom and he says, Judge, I'm a good guy now, I'll never do it again. The judge opens up his rap sheet and sees 365 crimes. Does that look like a good person to the judge? No. A penalty has to be paid for the crime. Just like a penalty has to be paid for our sin. And if we don't put our trust in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation, the penalty is death. Eternal death. Eternity in hell. Heaven and hell are real places. You might be thinking, I, I don't believe in hell. Well, then I would invite you to stand out in the middle of San Fernando Road here, close your eyes, and holler, I don't believe in trust. Eventually, reality is going to catch up with your unbelief. But it doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is what is true. And the truth is that God gives his only begotten will. And whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. But it's not enough just to simply believe here and then go on living however we want to. We do have to believe in our heart. But that has to be seen by turning from our sins, repenting, and putting our trust in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. If we trust in Jesus and our own goodness, we won't get to heaven. If we trust in Jesus and going to church, we're not going to get to heaven. If we trust in Jesus and man-made religion, we're not going to go to heaven. If we trust in Jesus and the prayers of somebody else, we're not going to go to heaven. Because we can only go to heaven by God's grace, through faith in Jesus Christ alone. That's the only way. And we've come out here tonight to share this message with you. We're, give, we're giving away money. We don't want your money. We're not asking you to sign up for anything. We're out here because we care about where you're going to spend eternity. 